So we start with our example now for development of control. So we'll develop some of these uh, concepts here, uh, mainly based on uh, you know differential equation kind of analysis, and uh, that discussion. And also with the, through this discussion, we'll develop some of the in interesting concepts. What, uh, how do we kind of see you know, what can be considered as a control input? So uh, let's begin with uh, these dynamics of pendulum. Um, so for this system, if you see uh, the model that we have done already in previous classes, um, previous uh, courses, um, you all are no very much familiar with this uh, model. Okay, so that that helps because you already have some kind of understanding of uh, this pendulum. Maybe I'll just get a pendulum along so that uh, I can demonstrate you some of these things. I, I have a pendulum here for you to watch also. So uh, you can see the motion. Okay. So so you all know about this, but uh, the the so of these kind of control aspects we can we can see through like you know some some kind of examples we'll we'll do here. Okay. Uh, some uh, experiments. Huh? Uh, so this pendulum, uh, you can get a model if you have not done already by doing free world diagram or kinematic uh, kinet kinematic analysis of uh, you know circular motion of a point mass. So I'm not going getting into the details there. Hmm. Okay, so uh, you can see this model of a pendulum here. Okay, so this model is giving you this full nonlinear form of a equation considering theta which is the angle of the pendulum here to be more than like you no know, small angle approximation so uh, with this uh, model uh, you can see that this has a harmonic kind of a behavior and uh, that too without damping but if you see the actual pendulum this uh, you know the oscillations damp down okay if i keep on holding and like no letting it go then oscillation slowly damp down okay they come down to zero so there is some kind of a damping that is existing so we will consider that damping into the system and uh, you know uh, then that will be more appropriate kind of a representation of the system hmm. uh, so 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 this what is missing here is this damping and we in, incorporate this damping term into the system at c theta dot term and then uh, convert those uh, forms of equation into again like you know the standard form so see we always uh, seek to get the system in the standard form uh, of second order system which you remember s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus uh, omega n square okay that is a term for the standard form of a uh, you know, second order transfer function 1 over this uh, uh, omega n square over this kind of a term. So we seek that kind of a form to have for the equation also and that form in the equation turns out to be where s square term does not have anything multiplying it. So whatever is multiplying this theta double dot we divide by that entire other parts of the equation and then like you know see the see these uh, terms uh, accordingly. So 2, 2 zeta omega n multiplying theta dot uh, okay, this term will be 2 zeta omega and multiplying theta will be uh, now we do not have theta we have sin theta term here but for the uh, low uh, theta approximation this sin theta is equal to theta this is a term this will be like a omega n square kind of a term. Okay, so that is how like you know we try to seek in wherever possible you know many systems this may not be possible to seek uh, some kind of a normalized form of the equations. So, so that we can see through some of the details. For example, if zeta is found to be some value here, we know that this is this pendulum system is some underactuated system with this zeta value and that, that speaks about uh, its nature. So this is about dynamics. Now uh, one can kind of do some experiments to, to see what is a, how do we get damping factor zeta 
so you can think about like okay if i time out okay how much time it takes to uh, get the amplitude uh, to some 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 half of its original value something of that sort then one can uh, or number of oscillations based kind of a counting of a change of amplitude uh, that kind of a thing will give you by logarithmic decrement uh, what is this damping factor zeta uh, so this uh, this can be th these kind of things can be carried out by studying the dynamics of the system and carrying out appropriate experiments to get the uh, parameters now uh, the this is mainly uh, again uh, so this is like a dynamics without any input to the system and then you now if you have an input to the system what do you consider as input so we, if you if you think okay oh, i want to apply some kind of a torque on the bob or for kind of a force on the bob so in which direction you can apply the force you can apply uh, that uh, that needs to be in the in the direction of uh, theta to have like you no know, it represented up here or if you apply something else what will show up here that those kind of things we need to uh, discuss and uh, figure out uh, if you see this is also like you know, similar to the system that you had with the uh, um, uh, disk drive arm in that arm uh, we we had a case uh, where uh, uh, the 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 head moves on the disk okay in a horizontal fashion it moves on the disk but one can see if that uh, that disk is not there only head is there and and uh, at the place of the head we have a big mass attached then like you know, in the vertical plane this will act as a pendulum kind of a system and at the back side you had the the coil and the magnet okay that is actuator which is giving some torque on this system that is a kind of a pendulum system that uh, we can have okay uh, so that is a one, one of the actuators possible in the direction of theta hmm. uh, so so but that is little bit uh, cumbersome to create such system um, so or based on like you know your actual practical requirements there may be some other kind of a consideration that uh, that may be coming in place for uh, input so we consider here that okay pendulum is mounted on a on a cart and uh, the end of the pendulum okay is is movable by the cart okay so if you have this pendulum okay it is mounted on the cart means like you know this uh, point where it is hinged that point is kind of like you know is moving by the cart okay the cart is able to move that point okay so if it is initially in motion now i can like you know affect the motion by actually the moving the the top point okay so that is how my my input i am giving to the pendulum okay so i am not really applying any force here but i am just kind of moving the top point point to give the input to to the pendulum okay that is a kind of idea so so we can consider these kind of inputs to, to the system and uh, when this input is considered here like you know the the hinge point motion by uh, by putting this hinge point on the cart and then the uh, say you can say oh, i apply force to the cart or I, I i can say okay i am directly applying this displacement to the uh, hinge of the pendulum so these are like you no know, different ways i can define uh, my control input so although i have a cart here and uh, the, i can apply some force on that cart i may choose to define you know that control be let the control be input x here or input x double dot here okay so this choice of what i define to be a control input to to my system has somewhat flexibility that i can have so uh, this is very important concept here okay so i can say for for this system uh, say there is a cart actually here for the system but i'm ignoring the cart dynamics and i'm saying that okay i'm applying this control input in such a way that I, somehow i am able to maintain whatever desired position for uh, for the cart to be x and uh, i apply that as a control input to my pendulum system okay so uh, as you'll see later for such a definition there are some some good advantages uh, that happen here so uh, you can see what those advantages are by by saying putting these equations together here uh, so this equation now in, with this input here uh, i'll not get into the details of this how this has come but like you know you can check out uh, by using lagrange formulation or using your 
um, you know, simple Newtonian approach, you can uh, simply see these terms. So you can see here for the same system which was there previously, of course there was a damping here that we can add anyway. Uh, for that this x double dot term appears here. Okay, so this x double dot upon L entire of this term okay, is some input which is in the direction of the generalized coordinate theta because this is a theta equation, theta generalized coordinate equation. Okay, so by doing this kind of a uh, input to my system, I get a term for my control which is directly uh, in the direction of theta as if I am giving a torque on this string. So normally giving this torque on the string is not possible but because I am like you know, able to apply this say desired acceleration, uh, it is as if I am giving a torque to the string in the direction of theta. Okay, and then this helps us uh, to develop a nice controller slater. So with the with the, with this term, uh, considered as acceleration is considered to be an input to the system, and further the damping is considered in the system. You get now this kind of a equation. Okay, so this is now a simple spring mass system. You can see the second order spring mass system with some kind of a force, external force applied on on this system. Hmm. And uh, with this force, uh, now I, I see I can define a control problem that okay, de develop this u in such a way that this uh, theta goes to zero or initially oscillating kind of a pendulum theta goes to zero in some you know given amount of time. Okay, normally the pendulum is going to take a lot of time, a uh, lot of oscillations it will carry out, and after some oscillation it will stop. Okay, anyway. But I want to kind of go to this final point in a, in a very short amount of time and how do I carry out that job. Okay, so uh, where is this kind of utility of such systems that one thing comes to my mind. Uh, you know where we have these uh, overhead cranes, okay, they are carrying some big amount of chunk of mass from one place to another place which is hanging out of the string and there is a cart uh, which is on the top of the overhead crane, uh, you might have seen these construction cranes, uh, they have this. So you don't want this uh, mass which is like you know, with a long string attached and it, it can by the wind it can kind of oscillate, it can have some kind of a motion possible. Uh, we don't want that uh, motion to happen, its oscillation should be damped down, okay, otherwise it may be dangerous for the for the personal or like you no know, life. Uh, so, so in that case this control could be kind of very useful. Hmm? So uh, what we do here is now uh, for such a uh, pendulum kind of a system, uh, we demand that okay we don't want any oscillation or if there are any oscillation they should get damped down very fast. So how do we do that now? So how do we so so this is our um, control and um, uh, control problem defined and uh, suppose we find such an input okay u, uh, then how do we uh, drive the card such that this u is applied to pendulum okay so that means like you know, we need to satisfy this equation so u is there and then x desired now this is not x uh, here x desired we can make it as x desired here so my x desired double dot should be that u and i integrate this u twice okay with, uh, with scaling factor l then i'll be getting like you no know, the actually the x desired as a function of time trajectory okay and that x desired if I go along that trajectory x desired then I am guaranteed to apply this u that is that was desired here. So u itself if you see will be a function of time as we propose some kind of a control which will be uh, uh, a function of this theta which is in turn the, the function of time and then uh, you integrate that uh, twice to get x and that x is what I will say okay my uh, hinge of the pendulum will be moved along that x. That is how I can plan my my whole control uh, implementation. Okay, so uh, so from control design we'll get u, and uh, we would like to like our x double dot to match these. So we consider trajectory to have the same x double dot. So so this x t double dot. Okay, then we find x t double dot. Uh, okay, uh, from that x t double dot is equal to something, 
by twi twice integration of u i am missing the scaling factors here you can put those scaling factors okay uh, so so now we can like you know control force f suppose there is a card pendulum card also is there in addition then i can kind of uh, use this uh, uh, force on the card to be f by some means we can apply that force so by say PDI, PDI, PID controller to track the trajectory which is uh, coming out of this uh, equation okay that kind of idea uh, can be possible for implementation there are quite a bit of advantages of uh, this kind of implementation uh, which we will not discuss for 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 now here but uh, later on maybe you know if you are interested i'll kind of show very very uh, good advantages of uh, such an implementation rather than considering directly this force to be my input and considering my force applied on the cart and cart in turn is is uh, having a pendulum okay so there is a cart here and the force f is on the cart and cart in turn is is uh, carrying this pendulum along so that is not a very uh, great um, you know practically uh, good strategy to implement because there will be a friction between the cart and uh, uh, its uh, wheels and uh, other places okay it's sliding sliding part okay so this is a kind of a way we we implement is uh, we we propose to do this kind of a control okay so this is a discussion about why if uh, is not directly designed and implemented uh, because of this friction that is there in the systems uh, anyway okay uh, so so you can do some kind of a equations development of uh, you know what will happen in the presence of friction how i consider uh, you know control with friction in the case of card pendulum system and then like you know, things will unfold a little bit what i'm saying here so the friction is 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 a major culprit to you know faithfully implement f that will make make my control uh, better okay uh, i can tell you something physically here okay see if the friction had not been there then any pendulum motion here okay if the pendulum motion happens here and if there is a cart without friction that is there some mass is there of course uh, then the cart would respond to the motion of this uh, pendulum as a reaction forces the acting on the cart at this point will start moving the cart here and there and imagine the worst possible case when the friction is so high that it cannot move at all then uh, even if like you know you, the motion happens here the cart is not moving so if the cart is not moving at all then like you know your feedback is somehow 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 lost there yeah, like you know this um, uh, so so you cannot affect pendulum uh, or pendulum is not able to affect the motion of the cart in in some way okay and that uh, is a big hurdle for um, you know um, getting any kind of a feedback based on this force implemented faithfully okay that much i can tell you uh, as a physics part but to really get to this uh, you will need to write the equations in the form of this pendulum cart total system so that will be two degree of freedom system the cart degree of freedom and the pendulum degree of freedom theta and uh, the force considered as an input so single input but two output kind of a system will be there and uh, with with the approach that we are discussing here right now those all complications of like you know, under actuation will be gone here if i consider u to be this kind of input and i implement this u by using the using this uh, you know, double integration and same, say some kind of a pid controller now there are some kind of a mathematical uh, questions that one may pose that okay how do you guarantee that we will be able to track this xt trajectory very well by using some pid controller okay those kind of uh, you know more kind of a um, finer mathematical aspects uh, would be there which we are not i mean we say that okay we are, our pid controller is fast enough to do that control so that uh, it is uh, able to kind of uh, follow the desired trajectory 
in a in a very appropriate sense okay so uh, this is what is this discussion about this uh, force here okay so we come back to uh, the system now we in this standard form it looks like this and then you can say write the transfer function of it and then see the open loop poles are here then uh, now we can propose some controller to move these poles around and things like that okay so that that those all all kind of things can be done now so we we propose a um, uh, pd control or p p control or uh, all these kind of different controllers can be done some some discussion that uh, you can find here uh, it is pretty simple to follow through um, so so the 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 in the, the control uh, problem is defined to have some say say we just want uh, to settle down faster than what it is uh, its natural damping would uh, allow it to do so we may propose uh, like uh, the derivative control or all, like no uh, complete proportional plus derivative kind of a control to to achieve the task here we have two parameters available for us to tune and uh, so we are now seeing entire thing all this development only in the uh, differential equation kind of a domain okay so you see uh, we are we have uh, chosen to do this it's uh, it's up to you to kind of consider that okay if you want to kind of do it on the um, laplace domain you can do that and see okay now for the new pole locations what should be this kd and kp gains so that i can move my poles to appropriate location uh, based on um, you know choice of kd and kp so so this is a final form of a equation in the differential equation domain see this is an error equation because theta itself is our error because we don't want theta we want theta to get damped out so theta should be desired to be zero then like uh, the the error equation is same as the equation in theta and uh, with this we can now uh, plan like you know what we want how fast we want we choose omega nu based on that and so so this is our omega nu here omega nu square and this is our uh, nu two zeta omega n complete like, complete term so we have some kind of a choice in both the cases to affect and we can choose this case to kind of have uh, whatever desired uh, you know uh, omega nu and zeta nu and based on that uh, our system response will evolve so you can use the standard system uh, second order system specifications to design these values and like you know, your uh, problem will be solved here okay and once we get this uh, zeta uh, then your u uh, i mean zeta and this your, your, your kp and kd are sized appropriately then this is final u and then you can get uh, this uh, uh, Oh, uh, no this is sort of with the theta d is equal to some value but so so you get as u in this in this form here and then implement it by like you no know, taking double integration of this and matching it to mapping it to uh, x desired and now x desired is is like my motion of my hand here okay so if you see here let me change this view so uh, i have this uh, pendulum bob here you can see I'll use a shorter length. Um, so with this, uh, you know, if it is initially in motion and I want to stop this motion, I need to kind of say, kind of move such that, like you know, it stops immediately. Otherwise, it will continue a lot of oscillations to move. So I, I move this my hand in in such a way that you know it 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 gets to the stop condition very fast. So the, I'm doing something in my head to do that. You can also try out, and you will be able to also do. Uh, so whatever is happening in in my head, okay, in some way is getting captured in the in the mathematics that you see on the slides, okay. So I can kind of like you know move this quickly to 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 do the job. So I'll not be able to do as quickly as, for example, these equations can can do for a, for a tune gains. Okay, so that is the beauty of uh, like you know using the mathematics to to some 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 kind of a uh, nice way um, developing control over such uh, such a kind of a phenomena. Okay, 
in one of the examples okay there are many such examples one can kind of start developing and uh, do that and this has immediate practical applications in the overhead cranes kind of a, uh, you know cart that moves, moves in over, overhead cranes okay uh, so let's move on from here to the uh, other example so you can get to more details if theta desired uh, was not zero then like we we'll have some difficulties here okay so now uh, one can see this whole uh, in the in the laplace domain how things will be represented and uh, with this one can kind of uh, see okay this is a feedback some kind of a unity feedback here with kp kda s here then uh, you can as we have discussed uh, no one can do a uh, root locus analysis of such a system okay and uh, that also kind of helps to kind of tune the gains or move, see the things in a different kind of a approach okay so uh, this is another example uh, about uh, the the simple pd control for uh, re like uh, regulation purpose so this is much simpler uh, form which we have already seen so it's just uh, uh, again pd control applied here and you can see this in the error form here okay so uh, the idea here if you see from from this error dynamics what happens is that uh, there is a virtual spring as if virtual spring is attached at, uh, to, to, to this mass which will have equilibrium at the desired uh, reference position okay that is what is so one can in, interpret this control as if we are actually uh, attaching some virtual springs and damper to the system okay to get some kind of a physical insight into okay uh, So this is the same kind of a discussion a little bit uh, in the in the domain of this example. Hmm. Now, uh, when we introduce this integral part, okay, whenever we have the steady state error not going to zero, that time we introduce this integral part. So you have seen in your simulation of the uh, simple, uh, you know, single link uh, attached to motor kind of a. Uh, system that uh, when you try to oscillate this uh, pendulum uh, it doesn't kind of come to the vertical position because of the friction okay so the friction is what is uh, not allowing it to settle into a uh, desired position or, or in the vertical position okay so so this friction is is uh, causing some kind of a steady state error in the system okay and uh, uh, even if you if 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 the system is to move in the horizontal plane, okay, uh, the same things would happen as uh, you know uh, would happen for this mass which is in the horizontal plane without uh, the spring and damper kind of a, uh, case. Okay, uh, so these are anyway the spring and damper are actually the virtual springs and damper that are put in the system. Okay, so. So, if in the presence of these virtual dampers in the system, one can see that if I keep this mass oscillating, it will stop at some point which is not really matching this R uh, completely uh, in the case when um, uh, there is a friction. Okay? So, friction in the system will not allow it to reach uh, R, it will have some finite error that will be there in the system, that is a kind of a point. So in the case of that kind of a error, then you introduce this integral control action. Okay, when the system has this uh, uh, steady state error. Okay, you see the response to the PD controller, and you see that okay there is some kind of a steady state error. Then you introduce the integral control action. Okay. Uh, So, uh, so we will talk about this uh, integral control action part. Uh, I think this main kind of a thing, or maybe we can give a summary of like you know, when to use these different kind of a, uh, control actions uh, in general in the system. So this will be good to kind of know. Huh? And then, uh, as we have seen, like you know, we use this, uh, make use of this 
standard first and second order system responses uh, which we have seen already I am just flashing the same slides here actually so these are the standard first and second order system responses with uh, like you know the, this is uh, this information should be handy to us for uh, application in, in, in several cases and then we will have this uh, formula for uh, the second order system behavior formula okay for you know maximum overshoot settling time this should be also handy to you okay so that as we saw in the pendulum problem for example we can use them to to set up like you know these uh, omega n and zeta to have a desired value or when you do the pole placement problem the two dominant poles which we are placing uh, close to the imaginary axis they can have some values taken by this uh, thing okay uh, so these are the uh, typical for uh, you know parameters that uh, that we, we define okay so this is uh, this is a formula that is given in the slides you can just go through them to uh, make use of them in in the pole placement problem or in simple second order system problem okay uh, these are some of the general guidelines that one should be uh, aware about that proportional control action will typically make the response faster increase the overshoot and uh, increase the settling time okay so if you use this kp gain higher and higher it amounts to increasing the settling time also okay although the response is faster it will settling time also increases so for the settling time to decrease we will use the kd gain okay so this derivative action uh, decreases the overshoot and decreases also the settling time and uh, but the response is a little bit sluggish Okay. So, the combination of KP and KD would give you some kind of a you know nice response possibility and integral control action again it makes the response faster it actually introduces some zero close to the origin in the in the uh, controller transfer function okay not really uh, for the system thing but controller transfer function will have a zero. Okay, so it may amount to have a zero in the system also, we, but we, we don't know it depends upon the kind of a form of a system in the closed loop. Okay, so uh, it makes the response faster, increases the overshoot and settling time, but it takes care of the steady state error. Okay, so imagine if you have a steady state error like this here and integral control action is there derivative uh, because uh, theta dot is zero, derivative control action is uh, stopped. Proportional control action, this theta is constant, uh, uh, so proportional control action will keep still keep going, but it is not uh, changing. Okay, KP times uh, this error will be a fixed kind of a amount of input that will be going into system, but that input is doing nothing to the system because, say, for friction, for example, like you know, even if you apply a force, the system is not moving. That kind of a case will happen here. So, in this case, the integral control action will help because if you put an integral control action, if you see from this point, uh, just like if the integral is starting, starting from this point, you can see the integral control action will be the area under this uh, you know, error curve. So, area between these two lines will be the integral control action. That area will keep on building up. At some point, like you know, it will exceed the friction value and uh, depend upon gain that you have used and uh, this error will be taken care of. So, there is a chance that uh, with this integral control action in the presence of friction, this, uh, this build up happens so quickly that uh, with sudden application of that force, um, the system moves on the other side. Okay? And again, there, uh, this integral control action will have to uh, come in picture to move it further back. And um, there, are, there are certain zones uh, for this process that uh, system will keep on hunting between the two values rather than settling into some final value okay so one one needs to be careful about uh, choice of the integral gain to prevent this hunting okay so um, how that is to be avoided and those kind of things are like more kind of a uh, mathematics can be worked out for for such a kind of a case okay by considering um, say your friction model or um, there are many other techniques also available so you you use this friction model and uh, use something called describing function method mm, to come to uh, what is the frequency that will that your system will be keep keep hunting into so so that these are not um, the, the matters of our discussion here 
but um, uh, one can use these methods uh, for for such uh, phenomena if at all you find somewhere in your uh, future uh, application of control uh, this this thing is happening okay so this uh, integral control action can have a possibility of uh, system getting into hunting okay and uh, how do you tune this PID gains typically is given in this uh, procedure called Nicolas, uh, Ziegler Nicholas procedure. It's just a matter of some kind of a steps that you follow. You can see these more details at this. And there's no point in getting into and explaining those steps. I mean, it's uh, simple information. Uh, you just kind of follow the steps and your gains will be tuned. Okay, so you do look at this uh, for practical tuning of this it is based on only like you know the experimental system is ready and I am now going to tune the gains or your simulation system is ready and I am going to tune the gains this is the way you can tune the gains you can try it out on uh, some of the systems that we are discussing uh, as a part of assignment in the class ok so uh, this is I think we will stop here for this discussion and uh, this implementation aspects we have already uh, like, you know, covered some of them and um, there are some more issues listed here ok sampling time we have seen already then uh, effect on system due to sampling we are yet to see then filters these are all related to like uh, your sampling and then um, uh, speed of computation or how much is the computation that we need to do that is uh, also important uh, consideration that we should finish uh, computation of control within the sampling time and um, yeah, speed of various interfaces also is, is a matter of things action that has to be completed within the sampling time ok and uh, so these are many like you know, some of the aspects we have seen we have not so but you should have this list uh, you know to see or check or put like a check mark ok you have taken this aspect into consideration this has so this is a kind of a checklist you can do for uh, you know controller implementation we have considered all these aspects or not you can check that ok so maybe we will stop here for now